Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott. What I want to do is go through our calculations that are involved in the um, determination of the percent hydrogen peroxide in the lab uh, using potassium permanganate um, as the uh, titrant in our titration. So the first thing that we need to do is standardize our potassium permanganate. It's a solution that tends to uh, sort of break down over time. It's fairly reactive. Um, and so what we're going to do is standardize it with this FAS, this ferrous ammonium sulfate. Um, and what we see here is that this is the actual formula for ferrous ammonium sulfate. Sometimes you'll see these sort of moved around, but those are all the different parts there. The thing that we're actually interested in is just the iron here. And then the iron, in this case, this is in the Fe2 plus uh, version of the, uh, of the iron ion. And as we see in the reaction below, this is going to react with the potassium permanganate. Um, it's in an acidic environment. And then we have our products here. Now, when we approach uh, a redox reaction, we balance it. It's a little bit different than what we would normally do. We would certainly want to balance out the um, other ions or balance out all of our other um, uh, elements. So we'd balance out the oxygens by putting a four in front of our water. Um, we then have eight hydrogens, so we'd have to balance that. But then what we need to look at is um, the oxidation states and how the electrons are moving around. And so in a redox reaction, you not only have to conserve your atoms, but you have to cons conserve how the electrons are moving around. In other words, the amount of electrons that are lost need to be equal to the amount of electrons that are being gained. So for that, we need to look at the oxidation states of all of our different uh, parts here. So to do that, uh, we'll go ahead and start assigning them. The really easy ones are the ions. The ions have the same oxidation number, so Fe2 plus has a plus 2 oxidation number. Um, hydrogen would be plus 1. Um, iron would be plus 3. The iron 3 plus. The manganese 2 plus is positive 2. We assign hydrogen as plus 1, minus 2 for oxygen. And over here, we have minus 2. Now from here, all we need to do is figure out the oxidation state of our manganese in the permanganate ion here, um, recognizing that it has a minus charge. And so if you want to pause the video and try to figure out the oxidation number of the manganese ion, go ahead and do that. Hopefully what you guys came up with was a positive 7 for the oxidation number. Um, and so just kind of working that out, um, you have your manganese, um, and then you have four uh, oxygens with a minus two, so it's contributing minus eight, and then you have a minus one overall charge for the ion. So solving for manganese, it would have to be positive seven to make that equation valid. So once we've done that, we can evaluate what's happening in terms of the um, what's changing, what's changing oxidation number. And so um, we see that the oxygen, or excuse me, not the oxygen, the iron is going from two plus to three plus. So that means it's losing uh, one electron in that process, which is oxidation. Um, and then we look at the uh, manganese and it's going from plus seven to plus two. So that means it's gaining five electrons. So we don't have it being equal here in terms of electrons lost and electrons gained. So to balance it out, we would actually have to uh, put a five in front of our iron uh, ions here. So if each iron is losing one, multiply that by five, we have five electrons lost total. And so now we have everything balanced. Not only do we have the uh, atoms balanced like we normally would, but we have the electrons uh, balanced. In other words, all the electrons that were lost were gained by uh, something else. So uh, that's an important thing. You might have already had that balanced reaction, but now you sort of know why. Um, and so we're going to move on to the standardization process. So what I did in lab is that I measured out between 0.4 and 0.5 grams of FAS, which was written up in the lab. And the value that I measured out was 0.4223 grams of FAS uh, on my analytic balance. And when I performed the titration, 
uh, I used 13.00 milliliters of potassium permanganate to titrate to the endpoint. Now, uh, what we know um, based upon the amount of FAS using the molar mass, I can figure out how many moles of FAS that we used. Um, and then, knowing the relationship between the iron, which is in the FAS, um, and the permanganate, using that molar ratio, I can figure out how many moles of permanganate were in my 13 milliliters, and then calculate our molarity. So let's go ahead and do that. So, <clears throat> so I know I have 0.4 two to three grams of FAS and I want to figure out how many uh, moles that is so we're going to convert into moles of FAS and the molar mass of FAS is around 392 grams per mole uh, then what we want to look at and just verify is that uh, for every one mole of FAS how many moles of the iron ion um, are present now this happens to be a one-to-one -one ratio. There's one iron um, ion in this molecule here, um, but that may not always be true, so it's good to sort of include that into our calculations. So for every one mole of iron, two plus. And then we can now convert uh, or compare our moles of Fe2 plus to moles of KMnO4. Actually, it's just going to be the MnO4. Uh, we don't have the potassium ion in our equation because it's a spectator. We're just going to compare it to our MnO4 ion. We'll have moles of Fe2 plus on the bottom. And then um, based upon the equation for every one mole of MnO4 minus permanganate, I have five moles of Fe2 plus. So when we do our calculation here, we get about 2.154 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of MnO4 minus. Now to calculate the molarity then, we know that molarity equals moles over liters. So my, I'm going to take my moles, 2.154 times 10 to the minus 4 moles, divided by our volume, but we want to change it from milliliters into liters. So 13 milliliters is 0.013 zero zero liters and then doing our calculation we get 0 0.01657 molar potassium permanganate we're just thinking about it as the MnO4 minus ion so that's our standardization process now I only did one trial um, uh, just as a demonstration purposes um, in class you'd be doing multiple trials uh, and then you would be um, averaging your um, your molarities, things like that. The next step is what we're going to do is look at different years of um, hydrogen peroxide. And we want to know, does hydrogen peroxide, the concentration, does it decrease over time? And so we have our equation here. And the nature of hydrogen peroxide is that because of the bond angles, uh, it tends to break down over time. So what we did um, over the years is we've opened up bottles of, um, of hydrogen peroxide and we're going to um, see over time, does the concentration go down? And so I have a bottle that I opened in 2017, 2018, 2019, and then this year in 2020. And what I did is I used a sample size of 0.5 milliliters um, and uh, of 0.5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide um, and then titrated it with our potassium permanganate. And we have these results here. Um, and so first thing we would want to do is figure out um, how many milliliters of potassium permanganate we needed to reach a titration. So I'm going to take my final volume minus the initial. Um, and I believe we get here 10.50 milliliters. Um, we have 10.40 milliliters. 10.9 and then we get 11 milliliters. So we can sort of just look at and say um, uh, did the concentration of our um, using the same sample size did the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide go down um, over the years? Um, maybe a little bit um, you know certainly there's a little bit of error here maybe from say 2019 um, 
to 2018 and so on. These are almost the same. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we could, we could say sort of visually, you know, just from these volumes that uh, our concentration may have gone down a little bit, but let's go ahead and calculate the percent hydrogen peroxide. Um, now, what we're going to assume is that the density of hydrogen peroxide is about one gram per milliliter. So what that tells us is that, so the, the density really means that if I had one milliliter of hydrogen peroxide, it would have a mass of one gram. So if I had a 0.5 milliliter sample, that means that I had about 0.5 grams of hydrogen peroxide. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is um, we're going to figure out um, how much, uh, what our percent hydrogen peroxide is. Now, something that you want to think about is, well, what, what does that calculation look like uh, in general? So if you're doing a percent by mass, um, you're looking at a part over a total times 100. And so what we need to do is we need to figure out, um, we know what our total is. So in our equation, our total is going to be about 0.5 grams of hydrogen peroxide. So to figure out our percent, what we need to do is figure out how much of our 0.5 gram sample um, of hydrogen peroxide was the active ingredient, uh, because a lot of it was actually water. So that's what we need to figure out here. Uh, using um, using information that we uh, that we got here, uh, so go ahead and uh, pause the video and see if you can go ahead and work it out, and we'll finish up the uh, calculations. Uh, go ahead and hit play once you figure it out, um, or if you're a little bit stuck. All right, everybody. So hopefully, what we figured out is that we have to use the concentration of our potassium permanganate solution and use the volume of uh, potassium permanganate that we use to figure out the number of moles. So as a reminder, we know the concentration of our potassium permanganate as 0.01657 molar. If we know molarity and we know a volume, we can calculate moles. So that's going to be our first step. So, uh, so rearranging our molarity equation we can calculate the moles of potassium permanganate used. And what we'll do just as an example, we can use the 2017 uh, as an example here. In class, you would normally you just have one of these, or maybe you compare one to the other, that type of thing. So our molarity again was 0.01657 molar. Uh, and then using the volume of potassium permanganate, but converting it to liters, this would be 0.01657. 01050 liters. So then that would mean, doing our math here, 0 0.01657 times 0 0.0105, we would get 1.73, uh, let's go out to maybe four sig figs, 399 times 10 to the minus fourth moles. Uh, and then that's the moles of the MnO4 minus. So we can then take that value, 1.7399 times 10 to the minus fourth moles of the permanganate ion. And then using the equation, we can convert that to, um, we can convert that to uh, moles of H2O2 uh, and then from moles into grams. So let's go ahead and do that. So looking at the equation, we can figure out the mole ratio. So in our equation, there are five moles of hydrogen peroxide for every two moles of the permanganate. So five of the hydrogen peroxide for every two of the permanganate. All right. Uh, next thing we would do is convert from moles of H2O2 to grams of H2O2. And this is going to come from our molar mass, and our molar mass is around 34 grams. So if I take 1.7399 times 10 to the minus fourth, times 5 divided by 2, and then times 34, we're going to get point, uh, let's see if I go out to four, four or five sig figs, 
uh, 0.014, let's call it 8 for now, grams of H2O2. So in our original 0.5 gram sample of H2O2, 0 0.0148 grams, uh, pardon me, of our 0.5 grams of, of our hydrogen peroxide solution, um, this represents 0 0.0148. That represents how many grams is actually hydrogen peroxide. So 0 0.0148 divided by 0 0.5 and then multiply by 100 to get a percent. We get 2.96% H2O2. So what really that tells us is that even though this was the example from 2017 and the bottle's been open all that time, uh, at the time of recording, it's about three years, um, that tells me that really the percent hydrogen peroxide really hasn't gone down. Uh, so that's kind of comforting to know. Uh, and then if you chose to use a different example or look at a different uh, year, um, you're going to be around 3% for all of these, which is pretty encouraging. So that bottle of hydrogen peroxide that you may have in your uh, in your medicine cabinet at home uh, uh, is probably still good for quite a while based upon these calculations uh, anyway. Thanks for watching.